Now, let's go back to this and see if there is a problem with this definition. So, what we have, we have like uh, the, the Eigen centrality, that it can assign high centrality to low degree notes simply because they are connected to a hub node. So this is, you know, one of the drawbacks of this centrality because if you look at this case, let me see if we find another case. So for example, uh, if we have a graph like this, so this is our graph. And then these are the degrees of, so this is, you know, has a degree of three. Okay, degree of uh, maybe, let's say, two, but, you know, or maybe four. Okay, five, one, 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 one. So this node is actually important, node three, but because the degree of the neighboring node to node two is, of, you know, it has 100 connections, right? So then when we compare these two, we will assign a higher similarity to which node? To this one, okay? So this is actually quite problematic because this node is actually connected to a hub node. So eigenvector centrality is a good measure. It addresses the, the, um, the limitation of degree centrality, but it's still problematic, okay? So why this is problematic? For example, uh, we can assign, if we look at web pages, so this is a, a web page, right? And what we have, we have, for example, Google. We know Google is a hub, right? It's like a big hub uh, in the, uh, in the uh, WWW world, right? So here, if we have a connection, just because we have a connection from Google uh, to this web page, Right? So this link is one of many millions of links that Google make. Then because of that connection, if we use Eigen centrality, this web page will have a very high centrality because it is connected to a hub. Right? There is a link from Google to that web page. So this is really problematic. Now, how to solve this? So we don't want to create basically fake hubs or central nodes like this one. We know that this web page might not be very important. Right? Google is important. But we want to solve this problem. Any ideas on how to solve this problem? Okay, so I'm going to give you so, like one of the solutions that was uh, actually uh, proposed by Bryn and Page in 1998. And these are the Google founders. So they actually came up with um, page rank centrality. And this is, you know, uh, one of the most popular algorithms in ranking web uh, websites. So the key idea is quite, actually quite simple and intuitive as usual. So here, what they've done is like to scale the contribution of the neighbors of node i uh, by the degree of those neighbors. Okay. So what you're, what they're going to do is like, you know, here. You can just normalize this by the degree of the node. Even if it's connected to a hub node, you can, you know, use some scaling, right, to kind of normalize that and take into account, you know, like um, basically the other connections, not the one connection to a single hub node that might influence the whole, uh, you know, uh, definition of centrality for that node. So this is basically, it allows to account for potential biases associated with links to highly connected nodes, okay? So you guys can think of this as a normalization process. So it's quite uh, simple. Here, uh, this is, you know, the uh, definition of the, um, you know, page rank centrality. So what they're defining here, they're defining a diagonal matrix. So this diagonal matrix, it has, uh, so here in this case, we're still operating in directed graphs. So it just stores the maximum of the degree, the out degree of node VI N1. So it's like a diagonal matrix. And then what we have, we have a dumping factor alpha. And this is actually, uh, it will tell us how highly we want the topology of the network or the graph to influence uh, the centrality. So how, how basically this local connectivity to a hub, how much we want it to influence the, um, the, the centrality that we, uh, we will assign to this one, okay? So local topology means that 
I know that this is a hub, okay? So this is the topological information. Then I want to say, okay, how much this topological information mattered to me when I want to assign a centrality to this, you know, value to this, uh, to this node in the graph. So here, uh, basically the, uh, the lambda one, so alpha is like a, like, it's just a weighting factor. And what they're doing is like, um, in their re original research paper, they're as like, it, this factor varies between zero to, uh, inverse of the largest eigen, uh, value of the matrix A, D, uh, inverse. Okay, so this is how they, this is uh, defined. And one thing to recall about this, so maybe we can revisit this and explain it also intuitively, why it is defined this way. How did they come up with this formula, right? What is the, uh, you know, the behind the scenes of all this math? So, but for now, we're going to cover just the basic, uh, cent you know, centralities, pros and cons. So here, yes? Uh, can this sampling factor be a learnable parameter? Uh, I don't know the literature, so yeah. uh, is there any work uh, to learn this as a parameter? I think that's a very good, uh, I like this, it's very good uh, uh, reflection. Yes, I think it can be learnable, but you need to constrain it, so anything can be learnable, okay? So it depends on the output, it depends on what is your goal, so if you know, for example, what you want to learn, you you know what is the constraint, what are what constraints you can uh, basically um, you know uh, define for your problem, right? Then you can learn this. Uh, so you can of course change it between uh, these two values, but you can fix it automatically to maximize a particular output. So in that case, you can use, for example, supervised learning. And this is actually one of the things you can explore for your project, see whether there are, yeah, I know, <laughs> not necessarily, but you can look at the literature and how can we uh, learn to uh, learn centralities. Actually, this is a very cool thing. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't looked at the literature yet, but maybe um, this is a cool idea, you know, uh, learnable or learned, we can say learned, learning centrality measures. And this is what machine learning is doing, right? Machine learning automatically gives you what you need, right? It gives you the, the, the measure that you want to use. So maybe you can give your machine learning algorithm different centralities, like uh, degree centrality, eigenvector centrality. You can give it also uh, page rank centrality. We're going to see other centralities. And then perform some tasks to give you a particular output, right? You have an output, but you want to uh, improve the quality of your output. So somehow you can teach your machine learning to fetch or identify the best centrality that is most suited to, to, your, uh, to your problem or your graph. Cool. So this is, you know, from the original paper. I found this quite interesting because you guys can see how, you know, the founders of Google used to, you know, like uh, basically articulate problems and they, de they dove into uh, graph theory to solve a big uh, problem. So uh, what they said, and just you know, to wrap up, uh, from this is an extract from their uh, paper. They said, in this paper, we have taken on the audacious task of condensing every page on the World Wide Web into a single number, its page rank. Okay, so this is you know, for each node, for each web page, they assign one centrality measure. So page rank is a global ranking of all web pages, regardless of their content, and is basically solely, uh, you know, it's only based on their location in the web, uh, in the web's graph structure. So they build a structure, they, they model this problem as a, uh, a graph. And here, uh, if you guys remember earlier, we talked about uh, what we call a uh, outgoing. Uh, these are outgoing connections, but they are ingoing to C here. They call them backlinks of C. So you can see that the vocabulary also of graph theory changes, you know, with context, application, the field, but the concept is the same, okay? Now, let's look at this. So this is, you know, one of the most exciting parts, actually, of this lecture, like analyzing these graphs, like this graph and these centralities and trying to derive meanings. Uh, so let's look at this graph, okay? And we have three plots um, of, the, uh, of the centrality degree of all nodes in the graph. So we have nodes six to uh, how many nodes we have here? 14 nodes, right? 
So these are, this is the, uh, you know, a degree centrality for these nodes, eigenvector centrality and page rank centrality. First thing, according to these centralities, which node you guys think is, which node not think, is revealed to be most central or most influential in this network? Okay, maybe you guys can not see very well, but I'm going to enlarge. So let's look. It's number six, right? So you can see that there is a consensus, okay, across all these different measures that number six, uh, well, this has the highest centrality in this plot, highest centrality in this plot, and also highest centrality in this plot, and it's also number six, okay? Now, let's look at number seven and number ten. What do you guys know this? This is an important, uh, you know, like I would like you to analyze this uh, before I tell you what's going on. So let's look at number seven. Oops. And number 10, right? And compare, let's say, the degree and the eigenvector profiles. What do you guys know this? So number 10, this is number 10. This is 7. And now this is number 10. And this is 7. Why, when using the degree, we have the centrality of node 7 lower than the centrality of node 10, but when using the eigenvector, we have the centrality of node 7 larger than the centrality of node 10. Yes, because seven, yeah, so because the degree basically of the nodes that are neighboring, so let me, that are neighbors to seven, it's higher. So let's look at number 10. So we can see that 10 here for the degree, it has a higher degree than seven. So seven, what is the degree of seven? It's four, right? The degree of 10 is one, two, three, four, it's five. So it has a higher degree centrality. But if you look at the degree of the neighbors, the degree of the neighbors, so this one is just, one for all of them, but the neighbors of seven, so one, one, but this one has a degree of one, two, three, four, five, right? That is why basically uh, when using eigenvector, we spot it uh, like seven actually was identified as more important than 10. But still across all measures, we have six most important, okay? Great, so... And also, let's look at the other one. So why, why we have, when we use uh, the centrality page rank, we have the centrality of V10, like a uh, node 10 is higher than the centrality of seven. So what is this specialty about, what is like, like the particular think about uh, page rank. So it kind of looks at hubs, but it dumps them down, right? If you're connecting it to, to a very, like, you know, like your, your neighbors are hub nodes, it kind of, you know, flattens that effect, okay, out. So here, what we have for, uh, for 10, seven, it has hub, a neighboring hub node, right, guys, remember? But if we use page rank, it actually like lowers the effect of hub, neighboring hub nodes. That's 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 the point, right? If this is Google, I don't want I don't want it to affect that very high. So we're dumping that down. So this is why in this case, ten is actually regains its um it has a higher uh, centrality than V seven. Okay. So great. Now let's look at this one. Which one is uh, like we have two different graphs, right? And we have, we assign different scores to a different nodes. So this is, you know, higher centrality. And which one actually was uh, uh, identified, like the coloring, basically, the labeling of these nodes, uh, which one was performed using eigen centrality and which one was performed using degree centrality? So the left one, is degree centrality, 
and the right one eigen centrality okay so degree centrality because you guys see here uh, that for these for this note it has the highest centrality because it has the highest um, out degree right and uh, this one has you know slightly lower so this one is four this one is uh, three okay but then for the other one for the second one what do we have we have actually this one with the highest with the highest uh, centrality against centrality why is that because it's actually connected to a hub okay so it's, it's basically the degree we take into account the degree of its neighbors so now we see the coloring has changed okay and the the influence the importance of the nodes has changed even in this simple graph okay